Shabbat Shalom. Today's Torah portion read around the world in all synagogues today that I really want to iterate on is Shei. Shei, C-H-A-Y-I-E, is a Hebrew word that means life of Sarah. And I think it's very important that we spend some time to let the women of this world know that they're very important to this world, to this universe, and also to God and need to be treated as such. So Shai is the life of Sarah because Sarah was the mother of all nations and Sarah even means princess in Hebrew language, translated into English. So as we get on to the Torah portion, we see in the beginning when Sarah and Abraham was together, how he walked as a man of righteousness and taught her the righteous ways and the laws of God. She was very loyal, faithful as a wife and as a mother to Abraham. And in the beginning, even though they went through tribute and tribulations, they stuck together no matter what. She stuck by his side. It wasn't about the materialistic things because they came and they left in that relationship between Abraham and Sarah. It was not about him being a king's man or having a king's ship or driving a Benz or having a bunch of money in the bank. Yes, Abraham was doing something with his life, but she seen greater things for him and what he did because he was a man of God and of righteousness. So she held faith within the God that he believed in and also made her God. She held faith within him as a man and followed in the footsteps as women do today in society, which men have lost track of how to be a man. All right. So a man, so a woman is stuck nowadays playing a mom's role, the female role, the dad's role and having to play a manly role. So we'll get into all that later on, because who are you? And we're not talking about your religion, your race. We're not talking about your nationality. We're talking about who are you as a man and a woman. Because the life of Sarah was a good life, a devoted life. And even when they left because they had lost their goods, they were going broke. They didn't have any food. They had to go to Egypt. And as we see in the story, when they went to Egypt, before she was given the name Sarah, she was called Sarah. He said, pretend to be my sister. You are fair. Fair doesn't mean light-skinned, dark-skinned, or brown-skinned, like we have the English dictionary that made it out to be that way. Fair meant good-looking. She was a very good-looking woman. Fair is good-looking. So she said, I'll do this, even though she knew the consequences of it. She said, okay, I'll pretend, you know, to be your sister. You know what's going to happen? Yeah, but as long as we can just do what we got to do and be at peace and then go, just, I don't want any problems. So at the time, they, the, the, you know, the Egyptian seen her. They took her to the Pharaoh. He wined her and dined her, but then plagues and diseases came upon him and his people. So he prayed to who? The one true God. Meaning what? That Egypt was not evil all the time. At one time, that nation actually did worship and acknowledge the one true God. So he asked the one true God, what happened? Why are you doing this to me? He said, because the prophet Abraham, that is his wife. He said, well, I didn't know. He told me it was a sister. That was because he didn't want to get. So after all that, he blessed Abraham and Lot with, with many, many goods, gold, shekels, and, and cattle. And Lot and Abraham went upon their way. Sarah was such a devoted and lovable woman that she felt that she couldn't give him a seed, an heir to the things that he had gained within God's one true law and loving God and righteousness. So she said, here, go take the, the servant bondwoman, take Hagar, have a baby with her since I can't give you one. But God said that, you know, I know, you know what? She laughed God off like I'm old. I know and I believe God and I love him. I just don't think it's going to happen. Now, even though she loved God and she had faith and she doubted, this is where we get Ishmael. And it turned out to be a whole big mess with her and Hagar over this child. But God still kept his promise because of who she was as a woman, who Abraham was as a man. Now, if we revert 
all of these lovely things and how the mother of, of many nations, which in Hebrew, Sarah means princess, had how their relationship was, we don't see that in today's society. In today's society, we have men that, and I'm going to break this down and keep it real with you, that back in the days, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, that when the people were hustling, good jobs, drugs, that they would go to a woman and flash. So as time went on, the, their kids and their kids and their other kids, everybody had learned that in order to be with a man, you feel as if he has to, yes, a man has to treat you as a gentleman and take you out, but... You don't need to know if a man can pay your bills and they constantly give you money because now you put yourself in a position that if that man's giving you things, taking care of your bills, he's going to feel, and especially if he's not a righteous man, he's going to feel like he owns you. Because anything that I'm paying for and doing that you as a beautiful woman shouldn't have to ever sell yourself short for because you should have your own regardless that's where the abuse comes in because he feels some kind of way because he's controlling you. And for the men out there, there's a lot of women that I have ran into, all right? And in certain cities and in certain regions that, that they'll sit down and they'll tell you when an outsider comes along, they don't know how to accept him because the women of that city or that state, the men have, have been very abusive toward them. They play games. It's all about this. So their life is surrounded about drama and the women can't accept a nice wholesome relationship because the drama and the problems is what they're used to. So until a man can learn how to be a daggone man, all right, and take care of his responsibilities, make his word his word, and make that, that household a unit, not the outside friends, not who's posting on Facebook, not the socialistic crowds and groups giving you input on something that only should be a, a, a unit of two people because two Adam and Eve were made as separates to become together as a whole. And that's what your household is supposed to be. And it first starts with a man being in the word of God and walking in righteousness. So he could pass on that righteousness to his woman so she could follow in his footsteps to have a life as of Sarah Shayai. And if we are not seeing this in today's society. There are women that I know personally that have friends. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, God, you don't mind me asking you so-and-so. What made you become lesbian? I've had a relationship with a man. And uh, it, you know, was going on for X amount of years. He was very abusive, verbally abusive. He scared me. And I can never trust another man anymore. And it just so happened I had a friend. And she comforted me at the time. And as she comforted me, she, me and her developed a relationship and that turned into what we have today, which is a lesbian relationship. We have women that have turned into lesbians because of the fact that men have become so feminine, so soft, they lost their manhood. That a woman feels like as if, dag, if I got to be more of a man than you, and you can't hold it down, I might as well just become a man myself. Shea'i in the life of Sarah is being, is showing us how a woman of many nations carried herself and was devoted, not just to only to the one true God, but to her man and what all of that stood for, which we are not seeing today. Today we have a lot of women that are selling themselves short to to either have a materialistic thing to fit into a socialistic group and right there you lose all self-respect because whatever you do is just like a resume all right for all the women out there doing wrong so when you do decide to get your life together there's always going to be people that are going to throw your past in your face so why get something started so you don't have to deal with it at all second of all for the men out there that do have good women and you out there hustling or you making moves to stay righteous with your woman and keep your woman righteous because once you corrupt that seed and she's going to love you so much that she's going to follow in your footsteps and do wrong too you get accounted that that's all accounted for because you did that's just like you raising a child you having a woman and swearing her to the left is is god actually marking down all of, i mean even double the amount of wrong that you're doing because you're supposed to be as of Abraham 
teaching Shai, your woman, the life of Sarah and how to be his righteousness. Can't say, you know, I want to ride and die chick. Sarah was a real ride and die chick, but she was a righteous ride and die chick. We have a lot of men that, that have scarred women so bad that they use the fact of them having kids and, a whole, and, and everything that comes along with them for housing and a place to stay. And you don't even care about this chick. You just used her to manipulate or monopolize whatever you got going on in your life, which is foul. So you get accountable. You, you're accountable for that. But for the women that this is happening to or before it happens to, you need to recognize. And the first thing you need to recognize is, one, look for somebody that's that is of righteousness because there was no such thing as material things. It was more of how a man treats you. Is it respectable? Can you guys be as a brother and sister and best friend when you guys are together? Someone that you can talk to, you know, because you want to have a healthy, loving, caring household. And the only way to have that and to walk in the life of Sarah is to have a man that is of righteousness. And it's hard, I know it's hard today to find a man of righteousness because look at how our society's left us, the economy's left us that to the point where a lot of people have to do things that they don't wanna do, but that's the trick of the devil. You pray and you have faith in God and you keep your household as a whole. And for those who are looking for a righteous woman, you know, just keep praying and, and God will bring you that woman. For those women that are as of righteousness and looking for a righteous man, just keep praying because God will send you one. It's very hard to find. We are in the times of Noah right now. We are in the tower, times of the Tower of Babel and Sodom and Gomorrah and Babylon. I mean, it's all playing itself out. And the best thing that a woman can do is be as a righteousness, especially if you got kids, because what these kids reflect today is what your household and your teachings as a parent reflected on them for them to be the way they are. And that's just keeping it real. I mean, a child and what's going on in society is a reflection of not only what goes on in the household, but what you let your kids intake. So you have to be of, as an intake as far as music, TV, and, and surroundings. And don't be so quick to go grab materialistic things or an outfit that shows off your body because you want attention. A real man is going to be able to just to look at you in your aura and talk to you and i don't care what you look like a real man is going to see the inside of you because he already knows damn god if i take her get her hair and her nails done and take her out and, and treat her like a queen wow you know he's already going to know these things you should not have to go to a man and lawyer yourself to ask him what is he doing and because once you start worrying about the financial part of it, it sort of sets way that that's all, and what comes along with the financial part, and this is a good example, is once you get a man that's paying all of your bills, doing all of this for you, he's gonna wanna know everything that you're doing because he feels like he owns you. Once he feels that he owns you, he's gonna start verbally abusing you. Once he starts verbally abusing you, then it gets into the physical. Now when that is in the physical, you're all trapped off, you did all this, you love him, you don't wanna go anywhere, and you feel like if you do go, you're not gonna have anything. Because that's what society has taught us as individuals. That what That is what our community and our, and our leaders make us feel like we're never gonna get anywhere, we can only have a certain amount of jobs, we can only get a certain education, or we can only get chosen because of our race or our color, or, and there's so much segregation that you first have to worry about yourself, and you women are all queens, and it has to start with inside of you. Not every one person is alike, and we've all been through good and bad times. But being in the word of God and being as of righteousness is the first step into walking in Shai, the life of Sarah. And for the men out there, it's very important that no matter how upset that we get, these are the women that plenish the earth. And our examples of how we talk and how we treat them are examples of what our future is going to look like. So... Shabbat Shalom and have a good week.